Welcome back to another Bike Tricks Live on a beautiful Friday afternoon. It seems like it was merely days ago we did the last one. I am back here at headquarters, so you may hear some ambient noise, because like most Fridays, our team is working super hard to get bikes boxed up, built, ready to roll for you. So I'm super stoked about this week's installment. Uh, I have a super special guest, Gavin. Come on in. Hi, guys. This is Gavin. Gavin, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm the product manager here at Bike Tricks. I've been with Bike Tricks for a little over three years now, and I've been loving it. And I've been loving uh, bringing this uh, Ultra FS to the current state that it's at. We've been working on it really hard. This is a super sweet bike. A lot of it, and actually, this specific iteration sold out in pre sale. Like, that's how much people are digging these bikes. So, I'm really stoked to dive in and have a look at this particular model. Uh, so, Gavin, this is the FS Pro. Previously, we had a model called the Ultra FS. Yeah. What's the difference? Okay, so there's a couple minor differences. The most notable, like noticeable one, is going to be the upgrade to the same battery we use in the, our duo bikes. So, the battery's sneakily hidden in there. It limits the maximum amount of uh, power, but it really does add a whole new look to it. The other little things that we've added is uh, four piston standard brakes on this model and uh, the upgraded Maxxis tires just to give that little extra bump to make it a properly pro. Awesome. And so this does use that same internal hidden battery as our duo family. However, this is not a dual battery model, correct? Correct. There isn't room for, the, uh, for a second battery that can actually handle the wattage of the ultra motor here. And so it doesn't have any duo, um, any of the electronics to actually convert it to be duo either. So no dualizer. That's okay. I think with this new hidden battery, it really offers a really sweet, sleek look, particularly in this brushed aluminum color. It looks fantastic. All right. So like I said, this is the Ultra FS Pro. Now FS stands for full suspension. Yes. What's a full suspension bike? A uh, full suspension bike is a bike that has not only suspension on the front with the fork, but actually a pivoting section in the back to add a level of suspension in the back. Excellent. So this is a, this is a shock. Yes. What can you tell me about a mid suspension shock? Like why would I want one of these? What does it do? Well, what it's really good for is um, allowing your rear wheel to move over rough terrain and keep the wheel on the ground. While a lot of people look for full suspension for a bit of extra comfort, what it's really great for is keeping the wheel solid to the ground when you're moving over really, really rough terrain. The downside is you can't fit a big rack on it or anything like that, you are very limited on how much you can carry with a full suspension bike. Yeah, I did notice that compared to our other models, uh, this one doesn't seem to have any fenders or a rack. What's up with that and are there options? Yeah, um, there's a couple like minor options for uh, racks. We don't have stock of our bigger racks. There are all off the shelf like racks that fit on your seat, seat tube, but they really, really limit how much weight you can do. So you're not, you don't want to get one of these if you're looking to commute or haul a lot of stuff with you. And for fenders, you can run plastic fenders or that kind of thing. The reason you don't want to run a, you can't run a metal fender because of the pivot movement and things like that. So you end up with uh, limit, limitations. And so this is really not a commuter bike. It's for the high performance, somebody that wants to ride and doesn't want to compromise performance for uh, convenience. Awesome. And I've seen folks put non-FS racks on an FS and either they bend their rack, they hit a bump and it's a yard sale because your stuff's gone flying um, or you're going to end up limiting how much flex it has which kind of defeats the purpose of a full suspension bike. Not to say you can't find them, we just don't currently have them in stock but if you're part of the Facebook group those guys are a great resource to share what they've used on their previous models. Um, Awesome. Okay, so you're talking about the wheel sets. The one we have here has 26 by fours. Yep. It's the fat model, but we also have a model called the Boost with 27 and a half by threes. What does Boost mean? Uh, boost is referring to the hub spacing standard that it uses. So this is the fat tire spacing. So it's a 197 rear hub, and that's so it has the clearance to run this really big tire. The Boost only has a 148 rear hub. And so the downside of that is you don't have as much room for big tires, but the upside is you end up with a more nimble bike and it feels really easy to maneuver 
a little easier to maneuver. And that com uh, stretches to the front, which it actually uses a different RockShox recon fork on the 27.5 uh, with more travel because it doesn't have to be as wide, so it can get away with a more uh, larger travel front fork. So if I bought a boost model six months down the road, I couldn't put a fat set of tires on, right? All right, sorry, uh, brief technical difficulties there. Um, so as I was saying, if you have any questions about this bike or for Gavin or myself on this topic, please go ahead and drop them in the chat. We'd be happy to answer them as we go here. Uh, all right, so we were talking about forks and travel. What's travel? Uh, suspension travel is how much the wheel moves or can move as you go over a bump. So on the front fork, that's pretty straightforward. This one is uh, 100 millimeters of front tra uh, travel, and that's just how far this shock moves. So when you push it in, the maximum it'll go is 100 millimeters. And then the rear is a little bit trickier because the shock itself moves only 44 millimeters, but because of the leverage ratio, the actual rear end moves uh, just over 100 millimeters of travel back there. And so it's not a direct uh, comparison, but that is kind of how it goes. Cool. That's really awesome. All right. Um, looking at these forks, they also have, I'm seeing, it's a little picture of a key. It looks like they have lockout. What's lockout for and when would I use that? Yeah. So we have the lockout here on the rear, which is, uh, and then we have a separate lockout on the front, which is adjustable. And what those are for is for when you're pedaling and not going over bumps and you want to stiffen up the rear suspension so you don't waste movement. Because the other downside to a rear suspension bike is every pedal, you end up moving the whole bike and so you get less efficiency. Whereas if you can, when you're riding, riding over smooth stuff or climbing a hill, you don't want that suspension travel. You want to get as much power to the ground as you can. And that's where you want to use a lockout. Can I change that on the fly while I'm riding or should I stop, adjust it, and then continue riding? Uh, you can change that on the fly um, as long as you're going over a smooth section. Okay. But I wouldn't... Uh, like while you're hitting bumps, you don't want to switch it really aggressively. Cool. And I imagine that's also probably pretty handy if I am transporting my bike is to lock those out just to, for the safety of my shocks and keeping everything happy and healthy. Uh, it's a good idea to do. The other, the only thing is you don't want to strap against it and put a bunch of force on it and leave it under tension if you have a lockout. So you don't want to strap down and push on the shock and leave it compressed at any point. So ideally you want to strap on the full suspensions, you want to strap from the uh, rear end and not try and strap where it's going to pull down the bike and push against the shock. Excellent tip. That's good to know. All right. So do we have any questions? Um, uh, Roger got yours yesterday. Congrats. We did just start shipping these very recently. So you're probably one of the first ones to receive it. I hope you're loving it. Uh, no touch up paint. Touch up paint, um, like I covered in my touch up video, is going to be dependent. Sometimes we have a lot of it, sometimes we don't, sometimes it comes later. So you can shoot us an email, support at Bike Tricks, and we can check into that for you. But no, they don't come with it stock. However, these uh, clear ones are actually just clear coated over raw aluminum. So if you have a little scuff, you can just clean it up and some clear nail polish will uh, seal it up if you need. Ooh. Easy peasy, so you don't even need us for this, because yes, like Gavin said, that's just a clear coat over the brush aluminum. Loving it. All right, just... Um, one okay. more note on our suspension. We actually forgot, we were talking about lockout, but the other two things there are is the, we get asked all the time is the adjusting the pressure. And there's one here and one on the bottom of the fork on the front. And so you're going to want to pump that up and set your preload. We have a couple videos about it on our or uh, help desk articles about it. There's plenty online of setting your uh, preload of pumping up the shock specifically to the right mount. So you're going to get the right amount of travel. You're not going to be bottomed out all the time. And then you also have this other red dial. This is on the shock. And then on the front, it's on the uh, right side. There's another little dial. And those both are rebound. So that's how quickly the shock will bounce back when you hit a bump. And depending on how consistently rough your terrain is, you want to adjust that as you go. So you'll, uh, that one you have to stop and change. But when you adjust it, then you can, uh, you'll feel it like bounce, kick you back up quicker or slower, depending on how smooth you want the ride and what kind of terrain you're riding on. 
So if I'm going over something super bumpy, say Saskatchewan gravel roads in the spring before the graders come by, you know, yep. a washboard, how much rebound do you think? Is that something you want to be faster or slower? What should I consider on that front? Um, on that one, you're probably going to want it to be uh, pretty fast. It depends on how long the bumps are. Gotcha. So if they're really short, you want it to be a little faster. But if they're uh, longer bumps, you want it to be slower so it doesn't launch you off when you're going off a bigger bump and it feels like it'll kick you off the back if you have it set fat too fast. Sweet. All right, so another question we've been asked a few times, and we did kind of mention earlier what the mid shock is for being for pivot, kind of for comfort, but more for movement. Sometimes we like a bit of shock for comfort. Can I put a thud buster suspension seat post on here, or is that just like you can. too much? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit much, but you can totally do it. Um, the big limitation is a lot of times on these, the other thing you'll notice is you'll get your bike and sometimes you won't be able to put the seat in all the way, depending on which, if you have the small size, the seat post will hit inside here and you'll actually have to trim the seat post. And you'd have to do the same with the thud busters because they have even longer seat posts. So you always run into this issue and it'll pump your bike up really high. So that's a good note for vertically challenged folks like myself. The model we have here in front of us is the large frame size. I already know that this is going to be too tall for my five foot four, 29 inch inseam self. Uh, I would probably be just fine on the size down. Gavin, how tall would you recommend for somebody on like height wise to fit this bike? Um, for this one, you'd be about five, eight and up. Uh, and depending on how you, if you want to run a thud buster, you want to be probably at least closer to 5'10". Yeah, they do uh, raise your seat quite a bit. But again, check your inseam length, check the standover measurements, and that's going to be your key, like we mentioned in our how to size your bike video. All right, let's see if we have any questions coming in. All right, so some questions about the handlebar and the stem. Do you, this comes with a pretty straight across, kind of an aggressive style handlebar. Yeah. Um, fixed stem, what can you tell me about this whole front end setup here? Okay, so this front end, yeah, is definitely more oriented around aggressive riding. And so it's gonna be a flatter setup because you want, you want to be in control when you're going over those rougher bumps generally. You can change it to a higher rise and pull your uh, different handlebar after the fact. But I, and you could change the uh, stem to one that's a, a bit of an angled riser with a, and, or a longer one. But I wouldn't recommend getting an adjustable one on these because the, if you're going to ride them rough, the adjustable ones, you're going to have to tighten a lot because they don't stay tight over really rough ground. And that's really what this bike is for, is rougher terrain. So you might run into issues with many of the adjustable ones. All right, and those would be sort of aftermarket, find what fits you after yeah. you've got the bike, because this is our stock setup. Now, do you know offhand, um, somebody asked. You can fit the A-bars on it. You can, yes? Yeah. Cool, we can fit the A-bars. Do we know if the handlebar stem is 90 or 110 millimeters? I'm sure we have it written on our specs on the website. Yeah, um, it's definitely not a 110. It looks to be a 90, it might actually be a 70 but we'll have those on the FS Pro page. If you scroll down, there's a nice chart that tells you what's what and how big everything is. All right, so we've got some brakes on here. Those are handy to have on a bike. Going is important, but stopping is key. So you mentioned that at the beginning, we put some upgraded brakes, at least composed compared to our normal stock brakes. What can yeah. you tell me about the brakes on this one? Okay, so these are uh, basically a very high performance uh, downhill style brake with four pistons per um, caliper. So they have lots of clamping force for when you want to stop. And then they come standard with a 203 millimeter rotor. Nice. So you got a big, uh, large braking surface that won't overheat if you ride for extended periods. And then combine that with the, the stock brake pads in it are also quite a high performance brake pad that'll uh, handle your extended braking. Awesome, this bike looks like so much fun. And so as it says in the name and as it says on here, this has our ultra motor on it. Yes. Um, what kind of advantage is that kind of motor on this type of bike? 
Okay, this bike is really well set up for the ultra motor because when you're riding these high performance or these uh, fairly winding roads or uh, rougher terrain, you really are going to enjoy that torque sensor because it's going to adjust your, uh, to you a lot faster than a cadence sensor would. So when you're trying to run these trails, if you end up with a cadence sensor, you'll end up hitting your brakes a lot to try and slow down because it might not uh, feel the same way because you're going to be changing gears a lot and that kind of thing where the ultra motor with that torque sensor, you're just going to be right in it all the time and you don't have to adjust it quite so much and it'll be a little more intuitive while you ride. Sweet. And this is a powerful thousand watt motor. So I yes. assume it's going to take me pretty much anywhere I want to go. Um, if you can hold onto the bike, it'll pull you up. Nice. I like it. All right. Now you mentioned shifting gears. What kind of gears do we have? What are we looking at for a drivetrain? Yeah. So here we're running the SRAM NX 11 speed drivetrain with uh, the automatic clutch built into it. So it'll stay uh, tight on really rough terrain and that smooth shifting all the way through. Nice. That looks like a pretty sweet one. What's this? That is a chain guard to uh, hold your chain on. So you can adjust that once you get your bike to be a little closer, but it'll help if you uh, keep the chain on so it doesn't bounce off while shifting gears and hitting really rough terrain. And so this is pretty unique to the FS Pro. Yes. yes. We just put them on this model. So it's a little different than what we see in a lot of our other models, but pretty handy for something that's built to be a bit of a rougher rider. Um, and then the other advantage to this uh, rear, uh, this drivetrain is we include the 42 to 11 tooth cassette. But you can actually upgrade that all the way to a 50 tooth to 12 uh, tooth cassette w without changing anything else except just readjusting your derailleur for the new uh, cassette. And again, that would be an aftermarket uh, purchase. We don't generally yeah. carry those ones, but it does give you some options and customization that you can do after the fact, depending on what type of terrain you like to ride. Um, all right, just checking if there's any more questions. Okay, anything I haven't asked you that you wanna share about this super rad bike? Um, not that I can think of. You got your, I think we're good. Covered a lot of bases. It is such a cool ride. Um, kind of just a new version of one we've been uh, selling for a little while and one that's always really popular. This gen does come in the three color options, this awesome brushed aluminum. It also comes in a red one that I got to see last week and dang, that red's a cool red. Oh, it's awesome. And then a black as well. So a little something for everybody. And I think that pretty much covers it for today. If you have any more questions or anything you'd like to know about it, you know, ask them in the chat. Feel free to shoot us an email. We will be back again next week. Gavin, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, you're very welcome. Happy to be here. Uh, and we'll be back with another installment of Bike Tricks Live next week. Have a good one. Thank you.